In your concept catalog notes, let's talk about law of conservation of energy. So using your blue quad color pen, this is defined as the total mechanical energy of a system is constant if there are no external forces acting on it. And we're going to take a look at some examples of this. By system, we mean an, an object or a group of objects. So if there are no external forces acting on it. And uh, the most typical example of an external force is friction. So let's take a look at this example. We have a ball rolling down a ramp from rest with no friction. Because it's starting from rest, we can say that the kinetic energy of it at the top is zero. And the potential energy at the top, let's just give it some arbitrary number. Let's say 1,000 joules. So how much um, would its potential energy be by the time it gets to the bottom down here? The idea that the total amount of energy doesn't change, that it's constant, means that because PE and KE add up to 1,000 joules, then the two must also add up to 1,000 joules in the end. So by the time it gets to the bottom, I probably should have drawn this a little bit more clearly with this ball being at the actual bottom, we can say that the potential energy is zero because M times G times H, uh, no matter what the mass is, no matter what planet you're on, uh, if the H is zero, we would say the potential energy is zero. So the kinetic energy, we would say, has to be 1,000 joules so that the total amount of energy is constant. And we're specifically talking here about mechanical energy. And so um, we should write an equation for this. And we can use red. When we say PE plus KE initial. Hi, Nadia. So initial is going to be equal to PE plus KE final. And when we use these PE plus KE, that together we call mechanical energy. So we're saying that the total mechanical energy of the system doesn't change before and after, as long as there are no external forces acting on it. We can illustrate this with a, um, as a graph. So for the ball before it's released, we can take a look at uh, the potential energy of it and the kinetic energy of it. We're going to make a bar graph. And it started with 1,000 joules of potential energy and no joules of kinetic. Afterwards, at the end of it, it now had 0 joules of potential and 1,000 joules of kinetic. So going back to the top here, what if we have the ball at the halfway point, right along here? What would be its potential energy and its kinetic energy? See if you can figure that out on your own using the law of conservation of energy. Okay, so if you determine that halfway down it's going to be 500 joules, that's correct. And to help us see why it is, think about h. That's the only thing changing as it rolls down. So if this was the height, h, then halfway down it would be h over 2. And since height is directly proportional to potential energy, half the height means half the potential energy. And then we have kinetic would have to be some number that will make the total energy add up to 1,000. So that's going to be 500 joules. And we could go on and look at other examples as well. If we threw the ball in, looking at it a quarter of the way down, um, then um, see if you can determine what the potential energy and the kinetic energy would be at that point where the H is three-fourths of the original height. So see if you can do that right now, PE, KE. So pause the video if you need to think about it. All right, so hopefully you got 750 joules, 250 joules of kinetic, adding up to 1,000 joules total. All right, let's take a look at another now, using friction, how would this work out? So we'll use the same numbers as before. 1,000 joules of um, potential energy. Release from rest, so initial kinetic energy is zero. And by the time the ball gets to the bottom here, all of its potential energy 
has been converted to other forms because it now has no more potential energy. So we can say potential energy equals zero. Kinetic energy, well, we don't know exactly because of friction. And when you have the presence of friction, you have the ball rolling down, hitting air molecules, giving some of the ball's energy to those air molecules, making them heat up. It's also vibrating some of the molecules of the ramp, making the ramp itself heat up. And even the temperature of the ball is getting hotter um, as its molecules hit against the air molecules and the ramp molecules. So when we look at this situation, we can still make a graph. We'll do PE, KE, and now we're going to add one. I'll use red for this. We'll, we'll do this TE, thermal energy. And that is what gets created when friction forces act on an object to resist this motion. And uh, it's one of the reasons why when a car is going down a very long hill or a mountain, sometimes you begin to smell the brakes. Um, we say the brakes are burning. They're not truly burning, but they're getting so hot that you're beginning to smell some of the, um, the heat from the friction of the brake pads. So potential energy, we can show starting off with a thousand joules as before. And kinetic energy is zero. Thermal energy is zero because it hasn't started moving yet. But once it's moving, by the time it gets to the bottom, our graph would look something like this. We, would, we can still make spots for PE, KE, and TE. Potential energy is going to be zero since now it's at the bottom. Kinetic energy, we don't exactly know. Um, and uh, we're just kind of we're just going to make up some numbers here just to understand the concept. Uh, we do know though that the total energy of this should add up to a thousand joules. So when we do like this here, we can see that the thermal energy would have to be enough. So it's going to be, you know, that much in there. What we're trying to illustrate here is that the total amount of the energy doesn't change, just that some of the kinetic energy was transferred into or transformed into thermal energy. So if you want to put some numbers with this, let's say um, kinetic energy at the bottom ends up being 700 joules. Then we know that the thermal energy ended up being 300 joules. Again, adding up to 1,000 joules to show that the total amount of energy was conserved. And uh, I want to just clarify something here. We're saying that mechanical energy is conserved as long as there is no friction. And that's what we looked at in the previous example. When we have friction, we can see that mechanical energy, PE plus KE, is not conserved. It went from 1,000 joules down to 700 joules. But that's because some of that energy was transformed into other forms, in this case, the thermal energy. So for practice, I'd like you to do this example. It's a pendulum being released from rest. Let me give you some numbers. You should draw this in your notebook, in your concept catalog. Let's say that the potential energy it starts with is 200 joules. It's being released from rest, so the kinetic energy is zero. So, um, and I'm going to give you one other piece of information here. These two are at the same height. And I'm going to tell you also that potential energy at this location or this position is 80 joules. And um, from that, uh, and I guess I will show, show one more. At the bottom of the swing, potential energy is zero. Using the law of conservation of oh energy, God. You should be able to find the unknown energies uh, at all the, for all the remaining positions. And after you've done that, so pause that and do that. And the last thing, at the end of your notes, write a two to three sentence summary of the law of conservation of energy and how it relates to a swinging pendulum. So in order to get credit for the notes that you're doing tonight, you have to have that done. All right, you guys. Thank you. We'll see you in class.